looking to do. Whoever they tell us to play, whoever they tell us to play, we're going to get it. Oklahoma is the Big 12 champion again. You never put like an animal in a cage. It's ready to wreak havoc when it gets loose. still being number three at the end of the year. Definitely is a chip on our shoulder. Everybody in this place right here has to go this week as hard as you can. How tough are you? How hard can you go? Diamond salmon with my shirt tucked. Yeah. I write this but not for long. Then I go cop another one. We live this life but not for long. Never look back. Can't let up the gas. We're moving so fast. Yeah, let's make it last. I got it all, it ain't enough. But I'm still gonna run it up. So I'm not gonna be what I want when I want when I want. Can you feel it? My God, we can. The energy is real. The stadium's empty, but it won't be for much longer. We are hanging out for the countdown to college football playoff semifinals in Arizona, in a chilly Arizona. Everybody's letting the Christmas food digest. Everybody's trying to feel out what they can feel. Well, what you can feel is the college football action we have been waiting for. I'm sorry, I'll just say it. The best matchup of the day is gonna be right here. It is gonna be at the Fiesta Bowl. It's countdown to the college football playoff semifinals. And we, for the next hour, are gonna get you caught up and ready in a way we've never done before. We are sitting at the, at the grown ups desk. I don't know how they, we glowed up. We went from the couch to the grown-up desk, I'm Jason Fitz, Mike Golick Jr., Harry Douglas, and this is just the, the very, very beginning, gentlemen, of a large, I mean, th there is a cast on this show for the next hour. For the next hour, we're going to be hanging out with you, getting you ready, and Mike, I, I mean, I like your couch on rankings reactions on Tuesdays. I've had fun this year, a game day, uh, partying around with everybody. This is, feels a little bit, a little fancier in the desk. What a world, man. Look <laughs> at how far we have come in all this one. We're walking around today. We got camera crews. We got multiple sets. We got reporters and people all over the place. Harry Douglas walked onto our couch the first week we did our college football rankings reaction on Tuesday, wearing his usual pair of Louboutin shoes. And now I feel like we have finally brought the setup to the standard of your feet. Listen, we're coming up. Listen, guys, we're moving up. We are. We're Wait, moving up. You don't in get to read this. Fashion. You've done like three of these. What do you years. mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Whatsoever do you mean? There is a, I have no idea. We always talk about this moment. If you're new to what we do for the next hour, we're going to stream you through a lot of the content uh, that you need, and you, we're going to get you ready for the games. But uh, I always say this with a little bit of pride. The first uh, stream that we ever did was Mike and I together three years ago, Rankings Reaction from his couch. We still do that show every Tuesday during college football season from the couch, but now we get to do it from the desk. And we're going to have a couple of different uh, – 
uh, we're going to have a couple of different sets. We are here, but in the meantime, we've got another set com completely. One thing I do have to tell you, I'm going to make sure everybody knows this as we come to you live from Glendale, that what you need to do right now as you watch the games is validate. You need to go through and make sure that you do everything that you need to to make sure that on the app you can get in and you can stick around in the app and watch the game. So make sure you go through, oh, yeah. sign, in through your, uh, sign in through your TV provider so you can hang out with us, and then we'll take you straight to the games if you're in the app. We're going to be here, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere the game is for the next hour getting you ready. But we're not the only crew. We've also got Trevor Scales, Gary mm. Streisky hanging out mm. with the people. They're outside partying. The whole crew, I mean, baby. Yeah, they're, man. they're out there drinking. We're deep. Oh, yeah. we're deep I don't today. know what's happening. Uh, Trevor, Gary, take it away, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, listen here, Fitz. We appreciate the toss and everything, but y'all must be living right. Cause we out here with the people, like you mentioned, but it's cold. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. Like, it it's kind of chilly. I don't know why they got this cold in the desert, Gary. Where the hell said it doesn't get cold in the desert in December? They've never been to Arizona. It's 54 degrees in Glendale, and that's that's hot Lord, in Bristol. Lord, I've been some shorts. I've it's been cold right. out here in the desert. I'm not used to this. At any rate, the big toast are going to be pretty bomby later when this game kicks off. Inside five hours now, and it's kind of crazy because, like, we're in, like, the main little artery where all the Ohio State fans are collecting at this particular bar right across the way. The spirits haven't flown hard enough for these two fan bases to start chirping at each other. Oh, and it's crazy because this is the fifth straight CFB semi for Clemson. Exactly. The third one for Ohio State. And these are blue chip programs. Yes. Like, they know that they're supposed to be They here. know what it is, right? And you can tell just by interacting with the fans. I had a chance to kind of chat it up on flights out here with a couple Clemson fans. And it's just another tilt for them, right? They fully expect to be down in New Orleans in a couple weeks from now. And that's just the mentality that both of these programs carry because, like you said, they have this sort of inherent nature of championship just sort of mentality right like and that's just the name of the game for them. and it's so funny we say that and clemson obviously included in that conversation but this entire season and even back half of last season we were like clemson this clemson that everybody's talking about ohio state and everybody or the most people are like ohio state is so powerful look what they've done running through the big 10 at the end of the day clemson's still a two and a half point favorite and i think that they like everybody you know Dabo sweeney likes yep, yep. everybody saying they're gonna lose because when they get in positions like this, they don't lose. They've been rolling since that earmarked game against North Carolina. And we're just getting rolling out here at the Westgate Entertainment District. Jason Fitz, what y'all <laughs> got to discuss from here on? Well, we've got a lot. Thanks, Trevor and Gary. We're going to keep going to Trevor and Gary. Plus, they're going to have some guests. We have a lot of guests coming up. If you're just tuning in, it's countdown uh, to the college football playoff semifinals. Jason Fitz, Mike Golick Jr., Harry Douglas. Before we get into the games going on uh, tonight, let's get you caught up, though, on some action going on right now. Let's take a look at the Goodyear uh, Cotton Bowl Classic. Got 17 Memphis taking on 10 Penn State. Penn State, Memphis, 38-33 Penn State right now. But check out this Journey Brown 32-yard touchdown run. Mm. This game early on, Mike, you mentioned it. The, the big boys for Memphis were inserting a little dominance. You can see scoring out 45-36. High-scoring affair. We'll get back to it in a second because Mike wants to talk about this one. Can't imagine why the Camping World Bowl, number 15 Notre Dame taking on Iowa State. That's Tony Jones with an 84-yard touchdown. Won't run. he do it? Notre Dame running away with this one. Mike was was of no use. Oh, for us. man. And let's just be honest, Harry. We were trying to prep for his show beforehand, and Mike did, wasn't even trying to watch us as he was watching this game. Well, I'll tell you, Mike, for that Notre Dame team, the three guys who had to play well for their team, Ian Book, Claypool, Tony Jones Jr., is the reason why they're up right now. Chase Claypool, the most consistent performer for the Irish all year. My former teammate, touchdown Tommy Reese, calling the plays for the guys today to the tune of a 30-point outing so well, far. Well, look at there. Notre Dame going camping, not something that happens all that often considering the makeup of our fans. No, you it's guys are, a you're not camping. You're, you're glamping. Yes, that's like exactly. Glamorous yeah. camping. That's, like, that's a Harry Douglas like camping. Like, yeah, I like with that the glamping, one. maybe some, some bedazzles, maybe some... The uh, bedazzles are more a you thing, yeah. Okay. Like, let's, uh, not, let's not get crazy. Let's try and make this a thing. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> well, now let's start to look forward, and as we start to look forward, before we get into anything else, the number one thing that a lot of people are going to have their eyes on with tonight's game, obviously with LSU, is going to be Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. And uh, the, the question is what his health is going to be. This is a, a little man that's going to make a big impact in the game. Check out uh, a little uh, clip on him. Clyde got the heart of a lion. You know, he's not uh, you know, the biggest guy in the world, but he plays like it. It's hard to tackle him. It's hard to get to him. He has a little power behind him as well. I've never seen somebody so hard to tackle before. Every time he gets the ball, we stand up to watch and see what's about to happen because we know he's about to make somebody miss. What a move by Edwards. He landed. Man, is he talented. Wow. 
it's crazy. Uh, it's so many times throughout the games that, you know, I hear defenders kind of like, what's going on, you know, why we can't tackle them. Clyde the Glide, the real question there is going to be what his health looks like. Now, for more on the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, we'll go to Matt Berry, who's with Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer in Atlanta for number one LSU, number four Oklahoma in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Matt, take it away. Fitz, thank you. We are inching closer to kickoff. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, first semifinal of the day. Head coach Lincoln Riley, third straight college football appearance for the Sooners, fourth overall. The three under his tutelage. He's got yet another quarterback here. Jalen Hurts, who's been in this building before as a member of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now he is the quarterback for Oklahoma. Jess Palmer, Joey Galloway, Matt Berry. Welcome in as we get close to the first college football playoff semifinal. One of the big stories for Oklahoma, Clyde edwards Elaire. We know he's not going to be 100%, but we presume that he will play this afternoon. Earlier this week, Holly Rowe caught up with Ed Orgeron. I know it's been a game time decision for Clyde Edwards Elaire. What do you know now that you can tell us? I think he's going to try to play. Uh, whether he can play the whole game, one or two plays, we don't know. But we're going to let him go and see what he can do. What have you learned that you can do without him if he's not able to play? We're going to use all three backs. Uh, all three have different skill sets. Clyde's a tremendous player, but these guys will be ready to go. All right, officially listed as questionable. It'd be a big loss for the Tigers if he is unable to go. Edwards Elaire has accounted for over a quarter of the team's scrimmage yards and total touches. There's a trio of young running backs behind him. Will they have to be pressed into duty? We'll find out early. And Jesse, if he can't go, Edward Delaire, even if he goes one series or two, how could this impact LSU? It's a huge loss for LSU because outside of Joe Burrow, he's the most important player in this LSU offense. He's been the unsung hero. And it's not just his playmaking ability, running the ball, making people miss and hitting home runs, but he's a huge part of the pass game as well. Whether it's catching the ball out of the backfield, lining up at wide receiver and empty sets, 50 receptions for number 22, a huge weapon for Joe Burrow catching the football. He's also an excellent pass protector, so if he can't go, they've got two true freshman running backs that are highly recruited, but they don't have the big game experience. It would hurt LSU. Whether Elair goes or not, Alex Grinch, the defense coordinator for Oklahoma, has his hands full trying to figure out ways to stop Joe Burrow, and he doesn't have a full uh, defense to play with. Yeah. You know, you look at the back end, they're going to have to make some plays, find a way to stop Chase and Jefferson and all these weapons that Joe Burrow has, and then up front, how you get pressure on Joe Burrow. Don't let him sit back there, be comfortable. They're missing guys. It's going to be tough. So the chess game, when he decides to send blitzes and pressure, it's going to be interesting in this game. When you hear Coach O throughout the week, we know Edwards Hilaire, he's an all-in-one back, and he yeah. believes that the three backs, and if they're pressed into duty, each one of them can give one of those elements. You've got a bulldozer, John Emery Jr., he's a fast, uh, true freshman. So perhaps three and one where Edwards Hilaire gives you everything. All right, quickly on OU, key to a victory. They have to score fast and score early. They've been averaging 12 possessions a game. They yeah. need to score on eight of them. I don't care if it's a touchdown or a field goal. They need to put a lot of points on the board. Yeah, you got to fight fire with fire. So Jalen Hurts has to play well, not just throwing it, but running it as well. And he has to take care of the football, guys. Turnovers have been an issue. Eight now in the last five games for Hurts. You cannot give the football back to Joe Burrow in a game of this magnitude. I will say this for Oklahoma. They've yet to allow a 300-yard passer this year. Joe Burrow, 11 of 13 games. He's thrown for over 300 yards. It's going to be a good duel of offense. That and more still ahead on the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern. Oklahoma will try and be the third team to upset a number one seed in the semifinal. And then the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl will follow that one at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can watch both games. This is important in the ESPN app. You just need to log in and authenticate with your cable provider. If you're hanging out with us in the app, you can stick around in the app and watch it there. God, just got to take care about Ken authenticating it. Mm. Easy for me to say. Uh, obviously, you're watching the college football, college football playoff semifinal preview. Show. You're going to get know. it eventually, it's man. It's long. It's long. You know, it's usually count down to the CFP real. semi. How about it? Oh wow! See, you listen, I'm, 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 I'm here because I care about. Look at there. That. Okay, look at their fits. So, well, you know, I'm, I'm just flustered by the the greatness of Matt Berry and Jesse Palmer. And they and they are Galloway. good, and uh, man, Jesse Palmer is just so damn handsome. Oh, he is. It, it, this does it to me every time. So, Cl <laughs> Clyde Edwards, uh, uh, Hilaire is somebody we were talking about. Jalen Hurts, obviously, another part of this matchup. As you look at Oklahoma, what is Oklahoma? have to do to win this game, Harry? I'll say Jalen Hurts has to rush for 175 yards plus oh. two touchdowns. Oh. C.D. Lamb, get the ball to him early. Give him gimmick plays. Give him a reverse. Give him a bubble screen. 
play off the, the attention that he's going to demand from the LSU defense and get other guys open. And Kenneth Murray, Kenneth Murray has to be spectacular for them to even have a chance. And last but not least, least say a prayer because that's what you're <laughs> going to need today against the LSU offense and their team. Hey, man, that's the push mentality. Pray until something happens. There could be a fair amount of that today. I'm with you, Harry. CeeDee Lamb is an interesting weapon in all this. We know he's one of the best receivers. He was a Blitnikoff finalist, all these things about him. But you're right. The way you use him as sort of a chess piece, because you want to see Grant Delpit, Derek Stingley, all these great guys in the LSU secondary. How are they going to address that pre-snap movement? Because we've seen at times this year that sort of window dressing has given LSU's defensive trouble. Now, that defense on the back end has gotten healthier, has performed better as of late. But how they do that to try and manufacture some of those big shots we saw a lot more from Oklahoma in the first stretch of the game season not so much in the last three or four games the first stretch of the season Mike is an interesting point to make because as they just showed on the screen there Jalen Hurts averaging 11.8 uh, yards per attempt that's the highest in the FBS so they are pushing the ball downfield but we've seen two different versions of Jalen Hurts throughout the course of the season we saw the version early on that got a lot of hype for the Heisman that was so good and then something happened in the effectiveness and he, he started accuracy became a little bit of an issue and, and he just hasn't played as well. So, Mike, as much as you're talking about what they need to do, can they do that? I mean, is Jalen Hurts going to be capable of playing well enough to beat LSU? Yeah, that's going to be the really interesting part because Jalen Hurts, all those great things there, I think he's had a fumble in three of their last four games and a turnover in the, through the air and interception in seven of their last ten. So this has been a guy that's put them in some tough compromising positions. You look at the game against Texas, their first time around against Baylor down there in Waco. And so to do all that, taking care of the football because defenses and then Big 12 especially, they all backed off. They said, all right, the most explosive offense in college football, we're not going to let you get over on us deep. And so they turned him in. I thought it was interesting. Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State said leading up to Bedlam that week, they're a wishbone team. He's got more rushing attempts than anything we've seen from this Lincoln-Riley offense with some of the great quarterbacks they've had the last couple of years. And so it's a completely different animal. How LSU chooses to address that early on, do you throw an extra hat down in the box, get Grant Delpit down in there, try and make sure he's not going to be the one to beat you and then live with it on the outside, knowing you've got a pair of pretty good corners. For that. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stack that box yep. and force Jalen Hurts to throw the football against tight coverage. And that's one thing this LSU secondary can do. They can get up, play press coverage, not give you open windows that you're used to in the Big 12 and make it difficult for Jalen Hurts. You guys have mentioned C.D. Lamb, who, by the way, we see here warming up uh, a couple of times. But Grant Delpit, somebody that I want to go back to, Mike, that you mentioned, because I, I, we can make the argument that LSU's secondary particularly came in so hyped and didn't live up to that hype. Yeah. It has started to play better. So when you look at specifically health being a part of this, but what does the secondary need to do to really shut down C.D.? Uh, I think they need to give them opportunities in man coverage, like Harry said. Derek Stingley Jr. is special. Everyone around there has talked about it. This kid's ability and his patience as a true freshman coming into this, an All-American this season, having that on one side of the field makes your job easier. Because you saw even going back to the SEC Championship, people are still trying this dude. Like, they're still throwing his way it blows in a lot of mind. this. And so you've, <laughs> got, you've got to have the confidence in him on the other side and in Christian Fulton to say, yeah, we guys can go ahead and do that thing. We'll put our attention into addressing how Oklahoma and how Lincoln Riley get creative within the box with their run game in the way that he's shown over the last And one years. thing I love about Christian Fulton, he is a big physical corner. Yep. Might not have the ball skills that Stingley Jr. has, might not have the feet and the hips, but he is very physical at the point of attack. One of the things that really interests me about this game in general, and something we talked a lot about on Countdown to Game Day, you look at Ed Orgeron, the coach that I know obviously didn't get a lot of love when he was hired. His success against top 10 teams has been absolutely incredible. His record, I think, 8-3 and three at this point, 9-3 and three against top 10 teams. His ability to, to, frankly, beat the best is a big part of what has made LSU so good. So that's a, a one thing, at least while we talk about the lack of playoff experience for LSU, there isn't a lack of experience for LSU specifically kicking the snot out of top 10 teams. I think Ed Orgeron and John Harbaugh in the NFL deserve credit in similar ways for being guys that we don't necessarily associate with bright offensive mind, someone who's calling the plays on one side of the ball or the other. But they both have done a great job of being humble in their approach, bringing in a guy like Greg Roman for the Ravers and then Joe Brady and what he has done on that offense for LSU this year. I think the comparisons are pretty apt. Well, one thing I know is that I'll take all the help I can get on education. So, Jalen Hurts, how can Oklahoma knock off LSU? Well, one of our best, Dan Orlovsky, has decided to give us the Dos Equis lesson. It's Dos Equis Today's Lesson video. Check this out. Hey, this is Dan Orlovsky for the College Football Playoff Semifinal Show. And today's lesson is going to be about how Jalen Hurts in Oklahoma knock off LSU. Tip number one, Jalen Hurts in the run game, really himself. 
I expect him to have 25 carries running the football at the LSU defense. That's going to force LSU to commit numbers in the box to stop him carrying the football. That leads me to tip number two. That will give CeeDee Lamb a bunch of one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. He's going to have to have a massive night for this Oklahoma offense to hang with as many points as LSU is going to score. And that's today's lesson. I mean, it's a great lesson, and it's great in theory. Tell me I'm wrong. Like, obviously, these games have to be played, and sometimes, if I could predict all the games correctly, I'd, you know, I'd live so on a small island. You wouldn't be island. sitting here with us. Right. I'd be wearing shoes island. like Harry. I can't find a reason that this is a competitive game. I, but just top to bottom, when you look positionally, one side versus the other, LSU's just a better football team. Well, and it, it doesn't help that Oklahoma is going to be down two guys who are key pieces to their defense, and that's Ronnie Perkins, who is their leading set guy, and then Turner Yale, who is the second leading tackler on their team. You were already behind the eight ball with those two guys. Now, to try to contain, now I, I expect them to play some two-man cover two, especially uh, if, if, if Edwards Hilaire doesn't go out there and play today. Now you don't have to worry about the run game as much as you did with him out there. So now you can play a little bit more cover two, play a little bit two-man, because if you do not against these receivers and you give them free access and give them one-on-one -on -one coverage, they're going to carve you up. Well, and I think it's a legitimate question in some situations how you address, because you're right, no Clyde Edwards-Alaire, that short area passing game for them, now a little lesser, because that's the way all these air raid offenses kind of want to operate. Push it deep and then have sp have room underneath there. So without him, how do you address the rushing ability of a guy that we just saw win the Heisman Trophy this year in Joe Burrow? A guy who is not sneaky fast. He is regular good old-fashioned fast. <laughs> oh, man, and the number of times he spun out of Georgia and just outran him, it was, it was alarming to watch at the SEC championship game. You're watching Countdown to the College Football Playoff semifinal. Look, I nailed the name of the show. It only took me halfway through. You're so through. good. Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, Harry Douglas. Uh, keep in mind, if you're watching this in the ESPN app, go ahead and take a second now. Authenticate in the app, and that way you can stick around through your cable provider and still watch the games right here in the app. We've got you settled. You don't need to watch anywhere else other than right here throughout the course of the day. Now, I can already hear, based on what I just said, my Twitter is alarmingly going off with Oklahoma disrespect. Uh, fine. Maybe I'm disrespecting Oklahoma. One thing we know at this point is Clemson feels like they are constantly disrespected. Check this out. Or a disrespect. Man, it's just like people clowning on you, criticizing you. We do feel disrespected low-key. People don't necessarily look at how we've played and, and what we've done. They just look at our schedule. The whole story all year long was Clemson doesn't play anybody. But somewhere along the line, you, your program should get the benefit of the doubt. Regardless of what people think, I think we're pretty darn good. Our guys' focus is on trying to win the very last game that they play in, and they'll get the trophy that nobody votes on. Disrespect of Clemson is a theme that they've been walking around with. Like, that's just part of the game. Joined now by Mark Sanchez and Jonathan Vilma here yes. on the countdown to the college football playoff semifinals. And, Mark, I'll start with you, bro, sure. because I feel like the disrespecting, like, that, that sort of thing <laughs> that they're carrying on, it kind of makes sense. Because I think we might be overlooking the quarterback that's thrown 22 touchdowns and zero interceptions in the last seven yeah. games. That is Trevor Lawrence. Like, what exactly can we expect from him? It's been those last seven games, like you said. And I'm telling you, Davo Sweeney's done a masterful job of changing the narrative going into this game. Remember, a few years back when he was establishing this Clemson program, he reminded them that they're on the rest of y'all bus, meaning they didn't get recruited to all the big schools. Wow. You're just the rest of you guys. Wow. This is the same thing revamped. Trevor Lawrence has been lights out these last seven games. I feel weird talking about it in front of all these Ohio State fans. Let's keep it down. But uh, really, it's been early on. We saw uh, yeah. poor decisions outside of the pocket as the play got longer. Yeah. He he needs to get uh, smarter and, and, and he more admitted careful it, right? with the football. He That's admitted right. he that he, he wanted to live start. up to that to That's that right. height. And so yeah. these last seven games, just take care of the football. They've rode Travis Etienne. And listen, their play action games come alive. Their RPO games come alive. And they, they really trust him. He's playing well. Yeah. Flip side of that, uh, Justin Fields comes out and says, yeah, I'm about 80, 85 percent, first of all. Uh, maybe he just gains the Kobe Bryant move. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as a defender, let's say yeah. Isaiah Simmons, this dude is in the backfield. He lives in the backfield. Remember, all he does is reload his defensive stars, so the defense yeah. is going to go through. Simmons, you expect a big game from him tonight? Oh, I expect a very big game from Simmons, and you mentioned it. Brent Venables, he doesn't get enough credit for how well he's done looking at his personnel and then adjusting the defense sure. around his personnel. Last year, he had four defensive linemen that were 
studs, so he went four down linemen and got after it. This year, not so much. The studs are in the secondary. You just mentioned Simmons. He's listed as a linebacker, but I mean, this guy he's is a, everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he's, he's everything. Backfield, 91 tackles. He does, yeah, team. exactly. Yeah. So now he said, okay, my D line isn't as strong. I'm going to now take the linebackers, my safeties, my nickel corners. I'm going to move them around and still be very aggressive. And it's been phenomenal watching the defense. So Isaiah Simmons, I, I, where, where do you want him? Let, let, let's put it that <laughs> way. Do you want him picking off Justin Fields? Do you want him sacking Justin Fields? Where State, do you, you want, want him? him on the side yeah, he's not going to be on the sideline. So just tell me, where do you want him? And yeah, that's, that's where he'll be. So at yeah. the end of the day, Justin Fields is going to have to keep his eye on him. And whether or not it was a matter of gamesmanship, him kind of revealing that he was 80 or 85 percent, whatever it may be. Yeah. What does Justin Fields need to do in order to take advantage of any possible advantage that they have offensively over Clemson? Of course. I think, number one, get that running game going, open up their play action. Action. When Dobbins is hot, it opens up their play action. They can stretch the field. They do have good enough receivers, I think, to separate. I know Vilma doesn't Ooh, think so. Yeah, we're going to have a great down the about field, this one. But yeah. don't sleep on Ryan Day. Now, this guy can dial up plays. He was my quarterback and uh, quarterback coach in Philly. Listen, last year, Dwayne Haskins, 50 touchdown passes. This year, Justin Fields, two new, two first-time starters. Now, Justin Fields throws 40 touchdown passes. Mm. Now, both of those guys broke Drew Brees' record in the, pack, uh, in the Big Ten for touchdown passes in their first year starting. That's incredible. He's really dialed it up and revamped this offense, so don't sleep on him. Well, can I go back oh, to Oh, good it? one. Can, hey, feel okay, because uh, he said that it separates. That's a, that's a definite no. Now, what, the first thing you said was the advantage Ohio State's offense has against Clemson's defense. There is, there is no advantage. There is no advantage. Now, let, let's just be fair very enough. real. The, let, first things first, right? Speed. That's right. Clemson has speed. Okay, second, we talked about receivers. All those big touchdowns that Justin Fields is getting, who's a phenomenal deep ball thrower, it's because the guys like K.J. Hill, Olave, they could get behind the defense. They're not getting behind Clemson. The only reason Brent Venables can be so aggressive with his front seven is because those corners cover. It's called cat coverage. They, they do it all day, every day, and they do a damn good job of it. So I don't see the separation happening. Maybe on a play action here there. You know what? You might get caught looking at the There's a lot of going on. I'm not caught. Calling their receivers slow. I'm just saying that. Are you sure, JB? The fast sure, guys. Sure, 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 sure. uh, let's stay with Ohio State. I mean, these guys got two Heisman finalists on the defensive side of the ball. We just talked about Isaiah Simmons, Dick Buckus Award winner, best linebacker in the nation. But Chase Young is the best defender, bar none, Not in the close. nation. Yeah. And he might be living in the backfield, too. So you know dang well Trevor Lawrence has his eye on where Chase Young is lined up at all times. Is he going to be a problem? He's definitely going to be a problem. We were talking about it earlier today. It's called the Chase Young effect. Even when he's not getting sacks, they have to slide the, the protection over to him. They have to leave a running back in help. Yes. to chip. help him Something. out, to yes. chip. So now you're, you're talking about really devising a game plan to stop Chase Young. So what does that game plan look like? So the game plan is, let's say Chase Young is on the edge, right, uh, right side edge. You have to now be Trevor Lawrence, and Mark Sanchez knows this. You have to be smart enough to say, all right, I'm going to slide my protection that way. Yep. So now when you slide that way, all the communication has to get to the offensive line and this running back because they're sliding that way. That means the running back has to go the opposite side Correct. to help out on the left-hand side, right? And now if you do that, God forbid one of those linemen doesn't get the call. Right. They miss it. All of a sudden, either he's getting a sack or one of his compadres is getting a sack. So we talk about everybody eating because of the predator, Chase Young. That's a Chase Young effect. We appreciate y'all joining us here on the yeah. countdown to the college football playoff yeah. semifinals here in Glendale, Arizona. Gary Strauss, Trevor Scales, Mark Sanchez, Jonathan Film out here at the Entertainment Center right outside of Glendale, Arizona. Jason Fitz, what y'all got? Keep it going, baby. Man, they're having – I'm still laughing at how bundled they are over there. Like, you can see the guys right now getting the field ready, you know, guys in shorts. It's not that cold. Listen, the, like Trevor Scales there in, like, all of his winter glory. That's why – you know what? And I'm amazed, too. Like, we have the benefit of coming from the East Coast. We know what true cold is, all right? This desert stuff, I expect the locals to be bundled up. I don't expect it from us. Well, yeah. I did not even pack for this weather. I, I, I need to say that. You know, there's an app that tells you what the temperature is going to be. Placed yeah, I was busy. Christmas. Oh, my God. Harry Christmas. Douglas, it's Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, it's Countdown to the college football playoff semifinals. I do want to go back to something the guys were just talking about as we have our eyes on both games going on. And one thing, uh, Etienne, and sort of the responsibility of chipping Chase Young. I, I am interested to see what the Clemson game plan is specifically and how they're going to handle Etienne and Chase Young because ultimately, yes, he has a responsibility to minimize whatever the damage is Chase Young can do, but also their offense flows through Etienne. So I'm not sure how much I, I, I'll be interested to see where that chess match. They can also, like, not just chipping him, but the way they choose to structure their run game. Do you... I, 
Chase Young is a guy you got to throw everything at, right? You got to read him. You have to make him the option player on some of those read option looks with Trevor Lawrence. You got to show him that Trevor Lawrence is willing to take and pull some of those very early on. So he's got to think a little bit. Fax tight ends back across, take out his legs, you know, cut legally, obviously, and all this. But you have to make him think because all these guys for Ohio State up front, they're Ferraris. And so when you got make him leave the garage, you got to make them worry about getting a scratch on that thing because the minute you put that into their head, it slows them down, and that gives you a chance if you're that opposing offensive line in Clemson. Well, and Harry, I'll go back to what some of our guys have said back in Bristol looking at Chase Young on film. And the comment I've heard multiple guys say is better than the Boses. And so you're talking about to give everybody an idea when you talk about what both Bosa brothers have been able to do in the NFL so quickly and you look at the dominance, you're talking better than the Boses. Even if we're having that conversation, it speaks to what effect he'll have in the game. Well, I'll say this. One of the, one of the things that Clemson can do to slow that rush down, screen game, quick pass game. Uh, you don't want to use ETN as ch a chipper, um, cutting and doing all that because I think he is the most vital person on this Clemson team. 100%. Not offense, the entire team. So when you have a guy like that, you want him to be his norm, be, be himself, and be able to make plays for this Clemson offense. Wait, speaking of being yourself, by the way, right now, so we got Eric McClain and EJ Manuel getting ready to join us. Two of oh, our yeah, fine coming right ACC in, yeah. network analysts here. Eric McClain, my former brother-in-arms on the offensive oh. line, Looking, looked winded coming up here. They had a dead sprint from down on the field. I get it, man. As a as a large man myself, stairs are our mortal enemy. Wait, so wait. I appreciate you braving it. For you us. went winded. I'm thinking he looks dapper. Oh, I he mean, looks fantastic. Like, don't it, get me I mean, wrong. We're talking about like a sort of a little fuzzy. What what what, what, what is that jacket? I don't. It's wool. Are you kidding is, me? Is that, <laughs> it's winter time. <laughs> okay, it's wool. Big boys, but look at it EJ. Is wool. Look at EJ. Like EJ smooth too now. No, no. See, but big boys don't wear wool. I thought that was a rule. Appreciate you. <laughs> Obviously, EJ always going to look great. Quarterbacks, uh, we up. expect that. The big guys <laughs> got to work, work, work a little bit overtime. So I, I just have to keep you. up with this guy. No, nah, you know, we started early in the season saying, hey, who's going to have the best suit? And I feel like we, we kept up our bargain both both sides. But let's also be honest. We're seeing, like, positional stereotypes <laughs> played out here. Like, quarterback comes out, looks good. Everything looks clean and pressed. He, he's just, just sweating. He looked tremendous, though. And he was joking. He was fine. He was good. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I just had to make myself feel better. So, yeah. Now that we, because we've got two ACC Network experts on, by the way, watch the ACC Network, check out their great coverage. Uh, as EJ Manuel and Eric McLean join us, uh, we were just talking a little bit about disrespect for Clemson. Uh, I'm looking at you, Eric, so we'll just start your way. Is disrespect a real thing in that locker room that they're feeling? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, these guys haven't lost a game since their sophomore year, and uh, somehow they're number three in the country, which at the end of the day, if you're here, it's fine. But there's no doubt that this has never happened before. There's never been a team that has done what they've done and slid in the polls to five at one point. Are you kidding me? And so I think there's no doubt that those guys are feeling that, excited for it. Because, again, when you can build a chip out of thin air, yeah. you've got a special thing going. Nah, they've definitely been disrespected. I mean, when Trevor was having his interceptions, quarterbacks throw picks. I mean, when you play high-level football, you're going to throw interceptions. So that's going to happen. You're going to turn the ball over. So I just felt like they were so hard on him. And obviously the expectations coming into this season, not to say they weren't fair because, I mean, the guy had a great season last year as a freshman, but they definitely felt a lot of disrespect, especially when they almost lost to Carolina. Well, and that's the thing is I have heard so many people, and I used to feel bad doing it, and then I realized everyone did, that say lost <laughs> to North Carolina. Yeah, they didn't lose. Because that, that's how we all treated it, <laughs> right. though, that one-point win yep. for Clemson in that game. But you're right, victims of your own success. Like when you go and do that yeah. to Alabama the way that they did last year, you're not allowed to in the right. public's mind have bad games the way Trevor Lawrence did early on there and it's okay to admit that because now 20 touchdowns and no interceptions later <laughs> shut up everybody right exactly. <laughs> except <laughs> us <laughs> well <laughs> apparently you guys already have other places to go so I'm being told in my ears <laughs> back to it. Heck all right. right back are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> all good oh, so so well it was great seeing you guys yeah. Yeah. I gotta give you all the lead course Eric, though. E right 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 <laughs> uh, quick pick before though you're gonna make it quick yeah pick. I'm taking Clemson. I don't know my score, but I'm taking Clemson in this one. Clemson big. They're going to roll today. Clemson big. They're going to roll. They're going to roll. Hey, tune into ACC Network. I'll tell you the score. Look at that. My guy. That's called Pokemon. Okay, so we're going to get you guys off. All right. All right. It's fun. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. We'll just pretend they're not being We can see This is the beauty of a show that we used to do on my couch on Tuesday nights, that them going offset in the middle of this, that doesn't phase us. We're used to eating. I'm used to having to worry about vacuum up crumbs later I mean, this is a fair point like the, the fancy people that actually know what they're doing for a living put uh, you know they put b-roll up here so that you see the beauty
beauty of the of the seats. So uh, there's no B-roll when you're wearing sweatpants in my living room. So well, this is a lot nicer. Disrespect is not just a conversation for us. It's a conversation that's had been having uh, around Clemson in general. Check this out. Our Coach Venable's defense is intense, aggressive, and hungry. Very strict, very little error. Everybody has to be doing their job. Very aggressive, we get at you, and we can do it multiple things. We learned from those guys last year. They set the standard, and just because they left the standard doesn't change. We have a lot of experience in our back seven. Back to the end zone, it is caught. It's an interception. And our defensive line, they're young, but they're all really smart, mature guys. It's the best defense in the country. College football playoff, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl follows that one at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can watch both games in the ESPN app, including all of the Megacast feeds. How awesome is that? All you got to do is log in and authenticate with your cable provider. So if you're watching this right now in the app, take a second, authenticate, hang out, and uh, you can stick in the app to watch more of the action that goes on. It's the countdown to the college football playoff semifinals. I'm Jason Fitz hanging out with Mike Golick Jr., hanging out with Harry Douglas. More star We just got a constant rotation of people that are coming in Crazy, and man. off of the set. It's a little like your couch, but it's more grown up. Uh, if, you, if you're just new to this uh, right now, we're just bringing people in. Come on. Uh, we're, we're getting some more star power. As exactly. Desmond Howard and David Pollock are about to join us. Uh, we'll let them get mic'd up for a second. There we go. And, uh, there we go. We'll continue, continue the com uh, conversation with them as it stands. Uh, gentlemen, how uh, you know, maybe we'll just ask Paul. I was gonna say you're gonna ask him questions before he's not mic'd yeah, up, so, so he has to get I got right this. In. Yeah. Key to the game. <laughs> Key to the game is no. Look, <laughs> we're maximizing your time. Y'all get here, and we immediately plug you in and make we sure we like it. We prefer that. Look way. at that. I, I Nicely done. Do. Okay. So, Good job, Jason. Uh, you're good for something. Well, you know, I try. It's it's one Every step once in a while. Yeah. Every once in a while. Okay. Defense. I want to talk to you. You're a defensive guy. You've been on yep. Chase Young all. It's a nice roly you got this. Nice roly. You can't hide money, baby. Are you kidding? You had money. Uh, uh, hey, Rolly on the wrist, Louboutin's yeah. on the wrist. What's the Louboutin? Oh, he does it one way. I need to be over there by Pollock. <laughs> No, you don't. You need to be somewhere in the middle, it's man. It's a high rent district over here, baby. It's the high rent district. You know how those receivers do it. <laughs> oh, man. You're doing it next level. Okay. All right. So, Harry, show everybody the bottom of your shoes. I mean, show everybody the bottom of your shoes. Oh, man. It's not real. He got the. No. Dad, here's bottles, what you need to know. Bloody shoes. I have exactly. hung out with Harry Douglas uh, a lot a at lot. this yeah, point. Yeah. I've never seen him wear shoes that don't have red at the bottom. Are you serious? And they don't, none of them look the same. His quote was, I only wear Jordans and red bottoms. And That's I was like, I man. I, I didn't even know red bottoms were a thing. So. Yeah. yeah, you know why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, All right. I'm just saying. Speaking of things we don't know is a thing, <laughs> uh, we're not sure who the number one team is. We're going to that now. So okay. uh, at, at this point, the number one seed has never won a, a championship. We know that. LSU coming in at number one. Pollock, is this the year that that trend breaks? <laughs> Uh, I know they're going to get there. I'm quite confident they're going to get there. So that's, that's the first step. Um, yeah. I think the game here is going to be a lot more competitive. But I, I'd love to – I want to see their defense in another against another competitive offense with Oklahoma. And then I could really pull the trigger. Because right now I would, Clemson, I would favor Clemson or Ohio State just defensively. I think they've been better. Yeah. Um, but the way Joe Burrow is playing offensively, he might not need a defense. I mean, as efficient as he's been. So – I'll give them the favorite nod, but um, these guys here, man, I, I tell you what, whoever wins, it's the first year we've had three teams I feel like they could win it, and, and nobody say a word about it. I remember before the college football playoffs first poll, we had different number ones going into that yeah. because Ohio State, Clemson, and LSU were all getting votes from the AP, so it's been razor thin all year. Now, yeah. Desmond, there's speaking of this game here with Ohio State, there was a, a raging debate earlier, and I want to get your thoughts on it because uh, Vilma and Sanchez were debating uh, how good the wide receivers are for Ohio State. Right. Uh, is there any advantage there that they can have against Clemson? When you look at the wide receivers for Ohio State, right. how do you assess them? I don't think Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, is losing any sleep worrying about Ohio State's wide receivers. I think he has a tremendous amount of confidence in his secondary and even more confidence in his front seven that they can get pressure on Justin Fields. So I don't think he's losing any sleep thinking, how am I going to stop this guy or how am I going to stop that guy? Don't forget, and if Clemson, if they practice good on good, 
You got guys going up against T. Higgins, used Justin it. Ross, Amari Rogers. Are you kidding me? These are Sunday participants they did, that they practice against. Why would you worry about the Buckeyes wide else? They don't have a Justin Ross. They don't have a, a, a T. Higgins. They damn sure ain't got a uh, Mari Rogers. So, no, so. We, we know who he's favoring in the wide receiver that category. Exactly. If, that was, yeah, yeah. if that was if that was a question saying. mark, we got that yeah. exclamation point pretty, on that. Pretty, pretty big exclamation mark yep. on that one. And you mentioned the secondary for that one, which I, I'm going to say Isaiah Simmons actively involved in all that. Between him and Tanner Muse, I don't know if you could find a bigger, rangier, or more effective secondary and what it allows them to do. We've talked so much about Chase Young, and rightly so, for yeah. Ohio State. But, David, when you look at Ohio, when you look at Isaiah Simmons, Simmons in Clemson, what what does he allow them to do defensively that's going to make it a nightmare? He's today freaky for Friday. Fields. I mean, you you just talk about quarterbacks want to come up to the line of scrimmage and be able to identify everything and know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Venables is already a great disguiser, right. and he already does a good job of bringing pressure from everywhere. And now you have a chess piece in Isaiah Simmons that literally has played every position on the field this season. He's played corner. He's played nickel corner. He's played safety. He's played inside backer, outside backer. He has snaps all across the board, so you literally can hide him anywhere you want and disguise pressure. He's a phenomenal blitzer. He can rush off the edge, so he's just a, a guy that Venables already has enough creativity. Now you can create more havoc that can really c- confuse people. Okay, I want to get everybody updated. We do have a tweet that came out from Bruce Feldman a little bit ago that said LSU star running back Clyde Edwards Hilary did practice yesterday afternoon, was cutting, moving around very well on the turf, and apparently uh, it looks like at the stadium he is doing the same through warm-ups so uh Pollock what difference is he going to make in this game what difference can he make in this game if he's healthy obviously it's he's another level I mean you're talking about a guy that um doing things in the SEC that hasn't been done has a chance to have 500 receiving and you look at the rushing over 1300 yards breaks tackles he's very Maurice Jones Drew like I mean he can catch the ball can jump cut can run through you he's got so many great qualities. So this this would take them from an offense. That's good, by the way. That's good to see, Des. If you see him wow. pushing oh, yeah. off like that. Exactly. And he's a guy, he averages 130 yards per game from scrimmage, which puts him 11th in the FBS. He's a nightmare. He's a matchup nightmare because he's so versatile. I mean, he's the most important p- player in their offense, not named Joe Burrow. Well, I find it interesting because Marcus Spears said on Golik and Wingo this week that soft tissue is so hard to predict. And, you know, you can feel good going up to it, but all the way up to game. So, Des, when you're dealing with something like this that's soft tissue, how do you balance testing it and knowing what you've got in the tank versus just letting it go? That's an excellent question. You know what I mean? There is no exact science to it. You know, we've all, I'm assuming most of us have pulled hamstrings. Jason did playing the violin. He pulled a hammy. I'm tying my shoes. I'm like, I've got my (laughs) your body type. And how your body reacts. Yeah, and he's going to have to, I mean, just monitor himself. He knows his body. He knows what he can what he can endure, what he knows, the, the pain, the stress level of that muscle. And he's going to have to just be the best doctor on the field for himself. But what you can't monitor is when a grown-up grabs you and you're trying to push through contact as a running back. That's what you can't. That's what you can't measure, which will be interesting to watch because he's one of the best in the country at breaking yeah. tackles and forcing people to miss, and that's his game. So I, I would be very safe. I, I literally – I told Des this yeah. earlier. I would have a little glass on the sidelines, exactly. and in case of emergency, break glass and yep. pull the Edwards Alaire switch. If I need him, I would, I would rest him and see what my other guys can do first because if I'm going to win a championship, I'm going to need him in a couple weeks for sure, right. and I would just see what I have behind him. And you so look you at know. Oklahoma's defense, you know, they're not at full strength either. Don't forget, they got guys yep. who are hurt. They got guys who are suspended. So this is a defense that comes in kind of shorthanded. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, would you put him on a pitch count? Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Uh, you, you, you ha- and, and I would use him if it mattered most, you yeah, know, late. Question. So that's – I mean, he, he's going to re-aggravate it if he goes out. If he hasn't been doing much and you go 0 to 100 and now you're out there playing a bunch of snaps, he's going to re-aggravate it once he gets fatigued. So you're definitely going to have him on a pitch. That's now. a good question, big money. I know we can never play the what-if game, but it feels like, I mean, but we're going to. your level of confidence in LSU without him to win this game would be a high. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is there some mindset? I mean, Mike, is there some mindset where you sit back and say, okay, Look, I think we got this without him. If he's not not close to 100%, get him out. Oh, that would be the absolute smartest thing to do because this isn't like other guys coming off the end of the regular season or the conference championship weekend with injury. This was a bowl prep injury. So maximizing every day that you've gotten, they've been treating the hell out of this thing behind the scenes and yeah, doing cool. right by him in the way they go about and prepare. But like you said, the variable of game day, Pollock, yeah. is the one thing you can't account for. The, the other big hamstring or the other big injury we're talking a lot about is Justin Fields. So you yeah. have to yeah. look at the same. Man. Obviously, different game day. 
different scenario. But yeah. Des, how does Ohio State need to sort of account for his health in this game? That's the one you got to keep an eye on. Now, Tom Rinaldi had already told us earlier today that he's going to wear that big knee brace because of his um, the, the sprained knee on his left leg. So that's going to, I think, limit his mobility. And in my opinion, he's the most dangerous when he's mobile. He's a dual threat quarterback. So I love J.K. Dobbins. He had an outstanding regular season, a uh, great uh, Big Ten championship game. But this is another type of season. And I don't think that you can go out here and just use J.K. Dobbins as a runner to beat the Clemson Tigers. You know, they're going to – you can't just have – see, Justin Fields is a guy that when things start to sputter offensively, Ryan Day can dial up number one's number as a runner, and he can get things going. He can jump start the, jump start the offense. Without the ability to do that, I think they're very limited from a running game standpoint. And now if he can't move around the pocket where he's, you know, extremely comfortable doing that, then that's going to limit the passing game because Brent Venables is going to come after him. He's going to dial up some exotic blitzes, some exotic pressures, things that they haven't seen before, and he's going to have to get out the way or there's going to be a bunch of sacks and tackles for loss. Pa Pollock, real quick before we let you go, I want to pack on to something he just said. Brent Venable is dialing things up. Clemson is the one staff here that knows exactly how to use this break. They're the one staff that's been through an entire playoff process. How much of an advantage does that give them today? I, I, don't, I don't worry about that. I mean, just because... Joe Burrow hasn't done this yet. Doesn't mean I feel any less confidence in him after I saw the SEC championship game, what I've seen him do all season. Um, but I, th I do think that matchup is the best matchup to watch today. It's, it's the matchup of literally Venables versus Day. I think Day's yeah. the second best play caller in all of college football next to Lincoln Riley. And I think Venables is our, he, he is, he's the, probably the number one defensive play caller in all of college football. Yeah, so who them. wins that matchup? Because I, I don't care if you just watch Venables on the sideline, by the way, like, they're tugging him back the whole time. Mm -hmm. right. That's the way the defense plays. That, that's the way they're going to they're going to bring pressure. If if it gets tight and he needs a play, yeah. his answer is not get conservative. Yeah. His answer is bring more guys. And so that'll be a fun matchup and to watch. If you give Brent Venables extra time to prepare for an offense, remember what they did to tour in the championship game? Mm -hmm. Like that young man was totally confused that first half. It was like they were out there playing with 13 defenders. He didn't know what to do. That's what Brent Venables can do to your offense when he has extra time to prepare for him. That's a new way to do it. 13 defenders? Dude, that's I mean, absolutely. The he was the ball to yeah. the Clemson guys. Let's go. Like, <laughs> if you don't catch it, it works. We go can for stop it. you with 13 Coach defenders. I'm seeing yep. out there. <laughs> Which one of y'all kicked me? I think one of them came up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Desmond Howard, David Pollock. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, y'all get out of here. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're you're now. Now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We're going to keep working. Thanks While for coming to recess. Out of here. While they get on, on mic, we're, we're going to have more conversation about quarterbacks. Check this out. Lawrence steps up, takes a shot downfield. What a throw by Trevor Lawrence. He's a baller. He's deadly. He's lethal. Never lost a game. Pretty sure their favorite quarterback's probably lost a game or two. Just let him keep hitting. To the house goes Fields. Welcome to Columbus. Everything he does is elite. His ability to be efficient in both passing and running is incredible. He's a straight baller. He's a one-man show. Touchdown, Jalen Hurts. Just knowing he's been to the national championship, he's never satisfied, and he knows what it takes to get there. He's very valuable. We're grateful to have him. It's just too easy right now for Joe Burrow in this LSU offense. He talks this mess. You know, he's not very quiet, and it's hard to get in his head. He can make all the throws. He can run the ball. He can do it all. He's what everyone wants out of a quarterback. It's countdown to college football playoff semifinals. Harry Douglas, Mike Golick Jr., I'm Jason Fitz. We've also got Gary Streisky and Trevor uh, Scales. I almost said Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Scales. That'd be a hell of a game. I mean, now, be, <laughs> but hey, you never know the star power coming through this show as we've been uh, going through. Remember, if you're watching us in the ESPN app right now, authenticate so you can watch the games and get ready for uh, get ready for all the action. You can stay in the app, watch us. Also, we're on YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, every, Twitter, all the places Everything that people you watch. Can name. If it's out there, we're streaming there, and we uh, will be here all also for the national championship, so don't uh, don't sleep on that. We're you know, we're not going anywhere. In the meantime, there are some things that just make me want to run away from social media for a week, and this is one oh, of them. Oh yeah. Uh, we decided, in honor of the end of the decade and in honor of the college football playoff, that we would do our own bracket, the best teams of the decade. Man. So I, I'm the first to acknowledge. Look, I, let's have an honest moment. It's just it's just the three of us talking. Go, on, right? go off, King. I was on a tour bus for a lot of this playing country music. So, uh, you know, ask me about the 2010s. We'll see. In at number six, 2016 Clemson. Maybe the best college football game I've ever seen. In at number five, 2010 Auburn. Mm -hmm. Woo! 
In it, number four, 2014 Ohio State. I mean, come on. Dyke oh. Thomas, right. Ezekiel Elliott. Oh. oh. 2013 Man. Florida State says hold my beer on that offensive weapon category as uh, they had some good ones. 2011 Alabama on the list at number two. Star power. Which means our number one top college football teams Ooh. of the decade. 2018 Clemson. Yeah. Okay. Now, we all voted. It was compiled. A little of this went in for all of us. Let's start at number one. I'll admit maybe some recency bias, but I have rarely been pointed out as being more wrong than I was before the national championship game last year. When you and I were in San Francisco and we had to do our, our picks at the end and we both came in on social media and said, look, this isn't going to be a game. Alabama's just Alabama's offensive line is going to handle that defensive line and they're going to whoop up on them. Didn't happen that way, and uh, we Three were standing. hours later, we were standing on the sideline saying, "Oh my God, uh, oops!" And but the alarming thing about that is, as everybody that worked for our network was going up and on the sidelines, people were saying, "Man, I, th this is alarming." The performance that they had in the national championship game took an already great team over to another level, puts them at number one. Well, on that's the thing. You do it to the preeminent dynasty of the last decade because that Clemson team is the best team. Alabama is the best pro – is the program that defined the 2010s with the way they went about their business and all that. But no qualms with that one there. That 2011 Alabama team, though, nipping at their heels. See, that, that's who I had at Yo. number one. Oh, you that was your number, number one. one. There was my number listen, one. Listen, you look at because that listen, defense, look, I get look it. Look at the guys they had. Trent Richardson, Eddie Lacy, DJ Fluka, Chance Warmack, uh, Dante Hightower, C.J. Mosley, Cut Courtney Upshaw. Oh. Drake Kit, Kit, Kit Patrick, Clock Clyde Hitting Dicks, all those guys, nine first rounders from that team after it was all said and done. Well, like I said, weren't the other two guys on that defense in the, in the second top round. three rounds? It was in yeah. the second round. I, like, it was that that team on defense was the 2013 Florida State Seminoles on offense, where every member of that starting group on yes. offense was drafted into the NFL, the highest point differential in NCAA history, 2013 Florida State. Uh, 2011 Bama defense only gave up 14 points one time during the course of the season. Bam! But let me ask you a question. What was the final record? They lost one game. Uh-huh. How can you be the best team of the no, decade? Listen, you lost again. Uh, you lost I, gotta, again. I have to explain this. Go ahead. Okay. They lost to an LSU team who was ranked number one most of the year. An LSU team who probably had seven or eight first rounders on their team alone. Now, if LSU would have won that game, I would have put them at number one. So where was LSU on your top six list? It's not there. They didn't All right, win so they lost they to a team that's not top six. six. They didn't win the national championship. Listen, well, like I said, we understand the big-time qualifier here is you've got to play in the natty a lot of this. But exactly. Look, looking at well, a lot don't of, fault my logic. Well, you have, my, to, my win my you have to win the natty. You have to win the natty, but then it's looking at the different aspects that made these teams great. We mentioned 2013 yep. Florida State's offensive prowess. That, 2011, or that 2010 uh, Auburn team that was on there. No one on that offense besides Cam Newton playing snaps Zero. in the NFL. That was one of the single greatest college football seasons I have ever seen from an individual effort when it comes to Cam Newton and what he was able to lift with that Gus Malzahn. He was so Malzahn dominant as a player. No one could stop him in the country. And, that, and that's what made Cam Newton Cam Newton. Well, I don't disagree with any of that, but I'll still say the 2011 Alabama team might have been the most talented, but they didn't win all their games. I'm still saying that's a hill I'm going to die on. Listen, if they And if you they, left Cam out of your yeah, top four. If they I don't got know on the field that. with that Clemson team from 2018, that offense for Clemson Yo. would not be ha showing what they had. And this is the exact reason why we need an NCAA college football game, oh, just God. so I can go in dynasty mode and actually see this happen. That is the <laughs> child that I am. Speaking of having a good time, which we are doing here, uh, I know one guy uh, with this network that has more fun than all of us combined. That would be Marty Smith. They're right now, Marty Smith hanging out with our guy Trevor Scales. Trevor, take it away. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, Fitz. Yeah, I'm here amongst friends leading up to the PlayStation Fiesta Ball. Got Ohio State right behind me, Clemson right across the way at the Westgate Entertainment District. And we are now joined on the countdown to the college football playoff semifinals by one Marty Smith, who's down there at the Chick-fil-A Bowl. And there is a very large question surrounding that whole general area, Marty, and it's surrounding Clyde edwards Elaire. What are the LSU Tigers hoping to get from him today? They're being pretty close to the vest, Trevor, but I'll tell you, I do expect him to play. Um, how well he'll play, how much he'll play, that remains to be seen. Uh, he didn't practice all the way up until yesterday leading into this Peach Bowl. But look, he's such a dynamic player. He's one of the best receiving running backs in the SEC, certainly. He uh, is, a, is a dominant runner, and he's one of those guys that has been such an integral part of this prolific offense with Joe Burrow and that great wide receiving core. Um, We'll know very shortly. Uh, they'll be out on the field starting to warm up here before too long, and we'll see what Clyde looks like as he's running. Look, man, I was here on the 22nd. I was here when LSU arrived and got off that bus, and I was paying really close attention to Clyde's 
uh, gait, as it were, as he got off that bus, and I didn't see him limping at that point. I will tell you, throughout this entire week, he has gotten intensive therapy, very acute therapy on that hamstring. So if, he, if, if, if anyone was ever ready to play after that type of injury in terms of, of what they've done from a therapy, is therapeutical a word, Matty? Okay, therapeutical perspective. <laughs> we can uh, work that out. I, I mean, it's a word in my world. Uh, I think I think he will play ultimately. Those soft tissue issues, those soft tissue injuries are a little bit tricky, but they'll find a way to work through it. Now, I had a chance while I was in Atlanta for the holiday to kind of experience just the vibe around LSU fans. They are confident as all get up. But what about the team it itself? Be. You mentioned at least Clyde wasn't gimping whatsoever. But what about the body language of the rest of that roster? Uh, supreme confidence, and why wouldn't you? They owned the, the awards season. Uh, Joe Burrow has had an historic season, and it's one that they hope to continue. I'm sure you've seen him say this week, if he was to analyze the season that he's had, he never dreamed about winning the Heisman Trophy. He never dreamed about being an NFL quarterback. He dreamed about the opportunity to play in a dome for a national championship. And this entire program has taken on his personality. Certainly they've taken on Coach O's, punching themselves and jaw checking themselves in the face. However, it's that union. It's the Joe Burrow Coach O union that has completely reshaped this program. And it is supreme confidence. I've, I've spent the vast majority of my fall in Baton Rouge, Louisiana this year, and you've seen it build. You've seen that confidence build with, with Steve Ensminger and Joe Brady and that offense being so prolific and then the Joe Burrow explosion. So uh, I would say they are as confident as they could possibly be. When they got a little boozy on their side, it's hard not to be confident, frankly. Now, <laughs> confidence is a theme for Oklahoma as well, though, right? They, they done been here before. It's nothing new to specifically Lincoln Riley and Jalen Hurts either. So what kind of confidence do they have going into this matchup, despite being an underdog for the third straight year in the semifinal matchup? Jalen Hurts is one of the most confident people I've ever met, and I've known him since he walked on the campus at the University of Alabama. Lincoln Riley is an offensive savant. I will tell you what they are. They are salty. They are tired of being told they're underdogs. They are tired of being considered an afterthought. They are tired of being, oh, Oklahoma's the fourth team. They're tired of that whole narrative. Now, there's also the major issue that they're missing two of their three best defensive players. And that's going to be a problem, especially when you're facing the Heisman Trophy winner, two of the best wideouts in the country, and the most prolific offense in the United States of America. Um, I do think that their confidence might be dented a bit there. They've been, again, it's interesting. Any time that Lincoln Riley has spoken this week, he seemed to have an edge. And he told me when they got off the bus, I interviewed him on the 23rd, whenever that was. That was a long time ago, Matty Ice, a long time ago. He was salty, Trevor. He told me, this team has an edge. I figure you will know why they have an edge. And that's the edge that they're bringing into this game right here behind us here shortly. We'll see if that boulder that my man Jalen Hurts is carrying on his shoulder proves to be a little something-something for the Oklahoma does, Sooners. That he? is Marty Smith joining us from the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Appreciate you, big dog. Thank you, brother. And that game is coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern, and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl will follow that at 8 Eastern. You can watch both of those games in the ESPN app and all of the Megacast offerings. All you got to do is log in, authenticate your cable provider, and you are all set. And we are all set here with the homies. <laughs> Garrett Rysky, as always, Ronnie Jones, John Beeson joining right us here back. on the countdown to the college football playoff semifinals. We're going to start this thing off right. We talked about the Chick-fil-A Bowl, and the biggest question surrounding that Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is Claude edwards Elair. How important is he to that offense with Joey Burrow? I think they'll be okay without him today. I mean, he's incredibly important with what he does in the run game, the pass game. He's one of their leading receivers. 
Uh, he's such, he's so good, so versatile that he creates problems. When Joe Burrow can't find anything downfield, he goes to Edwards Zillier, and then just the comfort. So I think it's a big loss for him. I don't think it'll matter much today uh, because Oklahoma's not going to be able to stop him on defense anyway. But down the line, if he's not able to recover, then it could be a little bit of an issue. This one's going to be a devastating loss at this point. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that losing Ronnie Perkins for this Oklahoma defensive line is devastating. The most, the happiest dude is Joe Burrow because he knows Perkins not going to be in the backfield at that point. LSU, the third best scoring offense. This is going to be a problem, John. Yeah, for sure. And we see this happen almost every bowl season. You get the big breaks and something happens off the field and it costs your team. Yep. And it's interesting because certain coaches think differently about guys off the field. In this situation, yeah, you hurt the player, but think about if you're Sooner, Sooner fan, yeah. all the student body, the players, this opportunity is huge. So sometimes you might want to handle things a little differently and say, hey, maybe I'll run you afterwards or spin you next year. <laughs> because you need it. You're playing one of the most prolific offenses <laughs> ever in LSU. Lemon, yeah. To be shorthanded, man, it's going to be tough, especially if you're a backup guy who hasn't played much. Yeah. It can be huge, and it will be huge. Like, oh, hey, go get the Heisman Trophy winner right, right now. The yeah. backup. Yeah. Run yeah. Perkins, 13 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks. That's going to be a gigantic hole to cover. Yeah. Well, let's shift the focus to this here, PlayStation Fiesta, yes, well, the one that we're standing in front of the crowds for both Ohio State and Clemson. <laughs> yeah. And one question that popped in my mind, you being the running back my, myself as well, kind of. I used to do that too. He's got to carry. He's got to carry. One carry in college. <laughs> you know, that's legit. But when it comes to these running back, this matchup between J.K. Dobbins and Travis Etienne, who do you think is more valuable to uh, here we go. Offense? See, man, when you, when you told us we were going to do this, it started an entire debate, and I yeah. was really torn, but I'm going to go with Travis Etienne because of the fact that he's going to be such a big part of not only helping in protection with Chase Young, the man-to-man -man defense that Ohio State's going to run, he's going to have opportunities out of the backfield, and then running the football, just his fingerprints all over the game. Etienne does not have a great game, then Clemson's going to struggle on offense. So I go with Etienne, but I, Beast, I, I know you disagree. I was going to say, like, you said it was an easy answer. I know. Last three games, Dobbins, 180 yards a game, okay? Seven touchdowns. Justin Fields, from an efficiency standpoint, has regressed later in the season because they are leaning on J.K. Dobbins. They go as he goes. You look at their offense, yes, it is prolific, but they average more rushing yards per game than they do passing. The passing comes as a compliment off the run. So I'm going with J.K. because if Brent Venables and company can stop the run, I think they can win the football game and just the off health, of that. the health of Justin Fields with, comes without into that question. answer. Yes. Well, That's exactly. Well. The health Him of revealing the that he was 80 to 85% of yeah. whatever have you we'll see exactly what he has to <laughs> Trevor can Trevor can Tony Trevor can Tony right you never know that's it what's here out at the uh, entertainment complex we gonna go enjoy the party Jason Fitz y'all keep doing the show or whatever <laughs> or whatever I mean I'm just saying they're enjoying the party and it sounds like a party I'm not sure we're gonna make it through the game in the press box because you're supposed to act professional there so we'll see how it goes I do have to ask before we get out of here there's there's one game there's one other bowl game in all of the bowl games that has ties to all three of us. And so we have to talk about it as a result, all right? And that would be the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl because it's in my city of Nashville. And, Mike, you're calling the game. Calling the game on radio for that one. Really excited to get down there. But what I'm looking for in that game, because it's Louisville and Mississippi State, on Louisville's side, Tutu Atwell, great, great wide receiver for them this year, is on his way to a potentially historic number. Needs 136 yards to tie, 137 to beat. Harry Douglas's single-season yardage record. And I actually want him to get it. Tutu Atwell is a big play waiting to happen. This young man, I think he led the nation this year. Y'all are having too much. Okay, Listen, so, now, I, get, get, get out of here. We're peeking behind the curtain because <laughs> when we were in prep, oh, it was back and forth. <laughs> ah, you're listen. rooting for me. You're rooting against me. We don't know what's going on now. You're all playing buddy, buddy, because cameras are but at, on. But at the end of the day, I want him to break the record. Records are meant to be broken. I want him to get it. He's lying. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. Don't listen, don't listen to Goalie. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is we're all rooting for him to break the record just so we can text you in the middle of the game. And that's no doubt about it. I might be there. I might I'm go. calling you in the middle. I'm bringing I you might, to the booth I in the middle go. of the game if he breaks it. Oh, that, that is remarkable. Okay, before we get out of here, any quick picks for tonight? Uh, 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 we'll start with you, Harry. Let's take a look at first at the Peach Bowl. Obviously, LSU, Oklahoma. Uh, anything change your mind on that? No, LSU all the way. Okay, so then uh, are you? Are we all squarely in camp LSU? All, uh, all in favor of LSU, say. 
say I. Uh, I. Okay, so now that we've decided that we all agree <laughs> LSU is going there, 8 p.m., we've got the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl right here on the field that's directly behind us that we're hanging out at today as we speak. So this is the one that looks, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I've changed my mind on every phone interview I think I've had to do over the last two weeks with different radio stations across the country. Harry, how do you see this one playing out? I'm going Ohio State. Wow, all right. All right, why? Uh, I just think the run game from Ohio State uh, – can, can, can get to the Clemson defense. And I, I don't think Clemson is as strong as Ohio State is defensively. So I'm going to lean on J.K. Dobbins. The one thing is Justin Fields, he, he's the wild card. If the Clemson defense can make Ohio State one-dimensional, they're going to be in trouble. Exactly. I'm going to go Clemson on this one. I just keep going back to what we talked about with Brent Venables on defense. The things that he can do are going to make Justin Fields stop and think. And when he stops and thinks, he is not nearly as capable of a quarterback, not nearly as efficient as the one we've seen all year. And if he doesn't have that ability to take off and run with that knee being the way it might be, I think they could be in a lot of trouble. Well, and I'm going to go back to what I mentioned to David Pollock, and I'll just disagree with Pollock on this. I think there are certain programs that get benefit of the doubt for how they process getting ready for the college football playoff. It's something that we used to give Alabama over the last several years credit for how Nick Saban knows exactly how to monitor guys' workload, get guys ready for the playoff. There's one coaching staff that in its entirety has been in place for all of this playoff and has this experience. That is Clemson's. They have more experience in how to handle this moment. That's going to be enough of an edge in a game that I think is even. So I'm taking Clemson in a close one. The Lone Ranger. Look, Look at the that. Lone Ranger. Look at that. You were always – now, there's, so there was a bunch of us on today's show. Uh, I, I want to say thanks, obviously, Harry Douglas, Mike Golick Jr., but also Gary Streisky, Trevor Scales, David Pollock, Desmond Howard, Jonathan Billman, Mark Sanchez, mm. Eric McLean, mm. EJ Manuel, John mm. Beeson, Roddy Jones, Matt, Marty Smith, Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer, all of us. I'm Jason Fitz, Mike Golick Jr. I'm just as excited. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come back for the national championship.